Here we're going to focus on three different stoichiometry problems at three different difficulty levels, starting from easy, which are going to be what I would consider to be perfect ratio problems, then going on to medium, which are very, very common in chemistry classes that pretty much have to do with the simple ratios, but not necessarily perfect ratios according to the chemical reaction. And then lastly, the difficult questions, which are limiting reagent problems. But before we get into any of these particular problems, what I want to do is I want to focus on the chemical reaction itself. Students who really understand what a chemical reaction is saying generally have a better intuition when it comes to the more difficult stoichiometry problems. And so we're going to focus on this reaction. This is aluminum solid, aluminum metal, reacting with oxygen gas to form aluminum three oxide. And this is simply the non-spectacular reaction of aluminum oxidizing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to balance this reaction and I want to talk about what those coefficients mean. And balancing a reaction is a lot of guess and check, but I'm going to start here with balancing the oxygen. That's just a personal choice. And what I'm going to see is that you have a two and a three here. So the least common multiple is going to be six. And I'm going to stick a three here and a two right here. The last thing that I need to balance is going to be the aluminum, and so I'm just going to stick a four right here to fully balance the chemical reaction. And what this means is that in your reaction, sort of our recipe, which we find in the reactants, is going to be four moles of aluminum per reaction. And then for oxygen, that's going to be three moles of oxygen per reaction. And our output, what we get out of running one single reaction, is going to be two moles of the aluminum three oxide per reaction. And that's really, really important because we can actually use those coefficients as units further down the road. And it helps us understand that what we're really talking about is simply a recipe to run one chemical reaction. So let's take a look at this easy problem. And we have three conditions. We have how many moles of aluminum three oxide are formed when, and we have different amounts of starting materials. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you that in each one of these, it's a perfect ratio to the balanced chemical reaction. So you have no limiting reagent. We're just running a certain number of reactions. So Problem one, you have four moles of aluminum and three moles of oxygen. That looks exactly like that single balanced chemical reaction. So what I'm gonna write right here is that I can run one reaction and every reaction is gonna get me two moles of aluminum three oxide. For problem two, what I did is I took the amounts I had in number one and I doubled them. And so what this is gonna get me is the ability to run two reactions, which is gonna get me double the output. That's gonna be four moles of aluminum three oxide. For problem three, I actually have half the amount that I had in number one. And so what this is saying in question three is that I can run 0 0.5 reactions and what that means is I'm going to get half the output of one balanced chemical reaction. And so that's going to be one mole. And this only works this way because I intended to make perfect ratios between my aluminum and my oxygen. But we can amp up the difficulty. So the medium question is, a, like I said, a very, very common way of phrasing stoichiometry questions. And what this is asking is how many moles of oxygen are required to react with 12 moles of aluminum. This means that I have 12 moles of aluminum. And what I wanna do is I wanna create that perfect ratio. And the way I do that is I set up a ratio according to that balanced chemical reaction. And I'm gonna do this maybe a little bit thoughtlessly. I know that I want my units to be equal to moles of oxygen. So how do I get to that unit? Well, all I have to do is say, in that balanced chemical reaction, I have four moles of aluminum, 
And for every balanced chemical reaction, I have three moles of oxygen. And so my final answer is just going to be equal to 36 divided by 4, or 9 moles of oxygen. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the third level of difficulty, which I would consider to be a pretty tough question in stoichiometry. In this question, we are asking how many moles of aluminum 3 oxide are formed when 12 moles of aluminum react with 10 moles of oxygen. I left this reaction unbalanced because I want to show you that the first step for any stoichiometry problem is going to be to double check that your reaction is balanced. So I'm going to rewrite the coefficients here, 4, 3, 2. And that's up to you to determine for many stoichiometry problems. You cannot run a stoichiometry problem until that reaction is balanced. So let's look at what we have. We have 12 moles of aluminum and we have 10 moles of oxygen. I'm just going to write that right here. 12 moles of aluminum, 10 moles of oxygen. And one of the things that seems to really stump students in the very beginning is that these amounts can be whatever you want them to be, and therefore they have nothing to do with the coefficients. We're going to use the coefficients to determine how many reactions we can run. However, like I said, they can be any amount. But the amounts you put in and what you designate as the limiting reagent will determine how many reactions you can run. So let's take a look at the steps I have outlined here. If step one was to balance, step two is going to be to find the limiting reagent. And here's how I do this. I go back to those units that I mentioned earlier about what the coefficients represent. And what I say is, for aluminum, if I have 12 moles of aluminum, my recipe for aluminum is 4 moles per reaction. And notice how these units cancel out. And what I end up with is the ability to run 3 reactions. For my oxygen, I have 10 moles of oxygen present. And my recipe for running a chemical reaction is 3 moles of oxygen per reaction. Once again, notice how those units cancel out and I only end up with the unit of reactions. I have the ability to run 3.33 continuing reactions. The limiting reagent by definition is going to be the reactant that runs out first. And in my method of doing it, it's the reactant that can run the fewest number of reactions. Therefore, my aluminum here is absolutely going to be my limiting reagent. When we up the difficulty even further past this point, we're going to have to understand also that the oxygen is what we would call the reagent in excess. What that means is that you have a quantifiable amount of excess left over in the reaction system. So now once we have our limiting reagent, we're going to solve for the actual answer. And I want to show you how easy it is once you know how many reactions you can run. So we have the ability to run three reactions. And for every reaction that we run, we get an output of 2 moles of that aluminum 3 oxide product. And we're going to multiply these together. Notice again how these units cancel out. And what I end up with is 6 moles of aluminum 3 oxide product. 